just bringing the big 9620R home from having it professionally detailed by our neighbor, Jacob Hoff. And he did a darn good job. Not that a John Deere needs a lot of shining to look good, but he took it over the top here. This time of year, there's only one good opportunity to move heavy equipment down the road. And that is first thing in the morning before these oiled roads heat up. If you take something heavy across this oil, once it's kind of picked up temperature, it is not pretty. You'll have road oil and rocks everywhere. And it would defeat the purpose of having this thing detailed because it got rid of all the road oil and rocks. The nice thing about taking this monster down the road is it's kind of like having your own private aerial crop tour. You can see right over the top of the cornfields. And man, they look pretty darn good. Home sweet home. in your fields this time of year things change extremely quickly I told you in the last video we have to keep a very close eye on our crops as they develop into these further reproductive stages our soybeans specifically have been on our radar these last few weeks definitely still plenty of canopy moisture this morning we're always looking for that third reproductive growth stage a 3 16 of an inch pod four nodes down from the top fully developed one two three four and you can see on the third node right here we clearly have a 3 16 of an inch pod, which was not there just a few short days ago. And it is very evident right here on the lower side of this plant where some insect feeding has taken place. And this is exactly what we're trying to prevent against as we come out and apply the fungicide and insecticide to protect our crops from both pathogens and insects. Ultimately, it means that it's time to dial up nutrient and yoga, say, hey, we're ready for our ground rig because we want to apply our products to our soybeans as soon as most of the moisture is off of the canopy to ensure that we get good reception on the leaves from the moisture. We're going with the ground rig this year because the ground itself is dry. It's about 40% of the cost of using the helicopter like we did last season. On top of that, we also get the added benefit of a higher carrier volume, meaning that they're using more water to disperse the products across the field. That results in better coverage whether or not that makes a financial difference, I'm not sure. I like the idea of having more volume, and if we had the opportunity to spray our corn with something that applied more volume, I'd probably do that as well. The helicopter or the aerial application for corn is just kind of the easy button. For soybeans, the ground rig just makes sense. We do need to be vigilant of the weather because there is a minimum amount of time from when the product is applied to when it dries on the leaves. If it does not dry and it rains and washes off, we basically just lit money on fire. So we definitely do need our fungicide, insecticide, and possibly foliar additives to dry on the leaves. So we don't really want to gamble on this. And there is a little tiny cell of showers dissipating as it closes in on our location here on the radar. Dad and I are doing a little scouting for soybean maturity and of course to see whether ground conditions are adequate for a sprayer to come across here. For the first time this season, actually seeing some signs of water damage out there in the pond. That's really the main place he's going to check. This time of year is where you really can see the stark differences between the soybean maturity group and of course the planting date. Those two things have a very synergistic effect with how they progress through the growth stages. An earlier planted bean, but of a later maturity, might be ready before a later planted bean of a much earlier maturity. This field is a pretty good instance of that. These were planted the second week of May. They're a Pioneer 32 T64E, I believe. They're a 3-2 bean, so an early group three. These beans were planted about three weeks after the 35XF1s that we dialed in to be sprayed. Let's take a look at them. Find a plant, go up the main stem here. One, two, three, four. You can see that we're actually just starting to see the sign of the third reproductive stage or R3. The typical metric to really green light that decision is for at least 50% of your field to be at that R3 stage before you bring the sprayer out. Everything is so variable with emergence and of course conditions, soil types throughout the field that it's tough to say that it's just a blanket R3 across the field, but once the majority is at that stage, you're probably okay to go ahead and go. 
That being said, this is a 200 acre field and I'm not gonna go to the other corners of the field to check. Although my physique probably would benefit greatly from a walk like that. Just not feeling that energetic today. Oh my goodness. We're being overran. What'd you determine? It's too muddy out there across the middle. If you want a prime example of superb service out of your ag retailer, look no further than Nutrien and Nioga. This afternoon, the dew's off of the beans and they're already hitting the ground running hard putting on our crop protectants. They're gonna make pretty darn quick work out of the 400 acres we have for them to spray today. When you're covering 120 foot swaths across the field, it's like the field was never even there. Sprayers are the definition of acre eaters. They just move through them. Okay, okay, I'll stop rambling. Let's watch them work. Ladies and gentlemen, we could not have asked for a better series of events than what has occurred here on our farm in the last couple of days. We had a bunch of beans sprayed. We ended up turning in some more acres to Nutrien. Although our scouting did indicate that the majority of the later beans we turned in actually weren't at that third reproductive growth stage. They were still hanging around that R2, but showing some very minor signs of the third stage coming along. The forecast over the weekend was calling for a decent rain. We figured if we didn't get them turned in and we got a rain, we may miss that window depending on how much moisture we got. The real fairy tale aspect of it all is that the cards fell exactly how we had anticipated. We sprayed a large chunk of our soybean acreage with the fungicide and insecticide, which as a matter of fact, I probably shouldn't be walking in this field, but I am. And yesterday we got a slow, one inch of rain. We went from a very questionable crop a month ago to knocking on the door of arguably one of our highest potential yields for corn and soybeans. Of course, we do have to finish the season out strong, but if we continue to get these nice timely rains, these beans are gonna pack on the pods in a way that we haven't seen in probably the last three or four years. That's a beautiful sight right there. Our yield robbers are no longer robbing yield. The sheer amount of vegetative loss from insect feeding just shows you why the insecticides pay on your soybeans. Look at how much defoliation we're seeing from insects, especially Japanese beetles. They just take so much from us. They vector diseases into our soybean plant that also rob yields. If you're not spraying insecticide and fungicide on your soybeans, you're giving up quite a bit of money. That's what I get for walking out in the soybean field at eight o'clock in the morning. It's a great sign to see that much moisture on the plants. It's not a great sign to see this much moisture on my pants.
We do actually have some maintenance work on the agenda today and that is going to involve grabbing one of our one-year-old eight-row John Deere corn heads and taking it into a Lions tractor because we want to have it looked over. They've been making some weird noises or they made weird noises last fall. Might as well have it done while they're still under warranty. Might as well analyze the situation before I get too gung-ho and get myself in a bind here. There's not much of a choice as to which one I'm grabbing. It's gonna be this one first since it is in front. Tires may be an issue. This one right here is a little bit low. Fortunately, I do have a tool for a problem like this. My nice DeWalt air inflator. If I had to speculate, I would say that these tires are rated for probably a pretty large amount of pressure, maybe 70 or 80 pounds, if not more. That is the true beauty of this thing. You can set it as high as you want and then walk away in case the tire blows. We will put 80 in it and see what that does. I've established that that air inflator is great to keep in your pickup truck, especially for jobs like this, small tires, you know, on an implement trailer, on a vehicle. However, not very good at tractor tires. It is small and mighty, just not mighty enough to air up a massive tire. Not only would it take a long time, it would also need a couple of batteries to do so. Well, this is awkward. I don't even have the hitch I need. Oh wait, there it is. I'm gonna say, I got three two and five 16 inch balls, but didn't even have one draw bar. It's working. Probably gonna jinx myself by backing the truck in there before the tire's done. All right, backup camera's nice. what happens when you let the boss drive. It makes a mess. Got the combines lined up now. In the previous video, I mentioned how beneficial those rainfalls we got were for our corn plants as they pollinate. A little bit of time has elapsed since that last video, so we can now go out in our fields and evaluate the quality of pollination we received the combination of the rain and cool weather should result in a pretty full year without many skips. Just by looking at the corn, you can tell that we have some very healthy plants. Really next to no disease pressure at this current time, which is surprising because usually at this point in the season, we started to see some of those diseases that can cause yield loss moving into our plants. Without referencing my notes, I'm guessing this was planted somewhere from 34 to 35,000. We do have a secondary ear coming on Unless we get 110% ideal conditions moving forward up until harvest, the second year usually is not viable. Walking through cornfields usually sounds like a better idea than it actually is in practice. I would recommend first finding out whether or not you're allergic to corn pollen, and then equipping yourself with a long sleeve shirt, sunglasses, and a hat. Because these leaves are not the friendliest on your skin, your eyes, or your hair. This corn is probably going to be some of our furthest along just for the fact that it was the first field of corn we put in the ground on April 23rd. We then followed it up with that big cornfield there and a cornfield over there to the northwest about a mile. Those fields with their early planting, early deep root development from getting them in in a timely manner should have really dodged a majority of the damage caused by that warm weather if any of our corn even got hurt by that at all. When you analyze an ear like this though, you spin it around pretty quickly, you can tell which kernels did not correctly pollinate. I mean, you see some here that either failed to pollinate or have something holding them back. Definitely a few spots here and there. It could have been the heat. It could have been insect feeding on the silks because if the silks get chewed off by a bug before it gets a chance to get pollen on it and fully pollinate, 
it will fail to do so. The one thing you can see on an ear like this that indicates that pollination was at least adequate is really the symmetry of the ear. Once the kernels start getting here and there, this thing, the ears will start to zipper together. They'll get weird shapes. Some of them will get crooked and bent. And that's just an indication of maybe not the most ideal pollination. We'll send these ears back home. Thank you for donating your life to science. In the last video where I was trying to remove some of the cigarette smell from our newer 8R370, I just want to say that I appreciate all the comments and feedback. Although I may not be able to respond to you all immediately, I do see a lot of what you say and take it into account. A majority of the comments mention replacing the cab air filters, which we did end up doing, scrubbing down the interior, which I will probably do at some point in the next couple weeks. Some people mentioned different scent products, putting charcoal in, coffee in, things of that nature to really absorb the smell. Why didn't you guys tell me that this thing has cameras on it? And it's not just one camera, there's a second camera. Now I don't have any excuses for why I hit something. I can't say I didn't see it when this thing's covered in eagle eye vision. I really want to see what these cameras have to offer. These 4600 displays take forever to turn on. Finally, we're seeing something. Where would my camera be? Um, machine settings, applications, video. Oh yeah, there we go. There's behind. And there's in front. That's enough playing around. My curiosity is finally getting the best of me. I've been told that these new LED lights on our brand new S780 are the bee's knees. So although we do have some light in here, I'm gonna fire this thing up and look and see what exactly they have to offer. I can even remember where the battery switch is. I think it's in here. Yep, right there. Let's hear that 13 and a half liter sing. Okay guys, I'll check back in with you in 10 minutes once the 4600 display is finally fired up. Where is the light switch? I need my sunglasses for this. Yep, the lights are in fact bright. Not that that's a surprise to anyone. I'll just say that I wouldn't want to meet this thing going down the road at night. One, it's very large and cumbersome. And two, those front lights are almost blinding. Speaking of cameras, I'm a little bit disappointed that no one pointed this out to me, but our last two combines have been spec camera ready. I thought that was referring to the combine advisor dollar for every time Marty just randomly showed up with a tractor unannounced and unexplained I'd be close to a millionaire they didn't ship the 780 with the radio antenna installed and Marty wants to listen to his gangster rap music he's got to have it on there all right the boss gave me the green light to do it so if we break something it's his fault not mine that's the way this works Just pretend it wasn't that close because it made me a little uneasy for a second. This is for the guy that gets really upset that I dropped the combine ladder. Nice and gentle. Like that, ladies and gentlemen, is what the inside of a brand new S780 combine grain tank looks like. I'm not quite built with specs to get in this 
tank and over the extension with these. So our camera should be on the side here somewhere, probably over here. No, those are just grain tank full paddles. I thought that's where it was. Um, oh, there it is right there. I would say it's designed to run right up there. So it looks like we're gonna need the specific camera made for this. It looks like a five pin connection and some way to mount it up there so you can see into the grain tank. We've got in and gathered our intel. Now let's see if we can make it out. All right, it was easier to get out than in. That's surprising, usually it's the opposite. I have a camera system on this grain cart that probably is gonna be removed. The grain cart is leaving the farm here at some point in the next couple of weeks. Uh, of course, that's a five pin connection and it's also a clip on and not a thread. So that's not gonna work. I thought we'd get some utility out of that, but we may just have to move it to the next grain cart. Camera is secured. We also had to buy two adapters. I didn't realize we're gonna be part of the transaction, but it is what it is. Now we'll do our daily leisurely stroll through the John Deere lot and oodle over equipment that we can't afford. Combine, there's a new series planter. It's a 40 foot splitter, that looks nice. I love those new tanks. An entire section of drapers, corn heads, new drapers, new corn heads. Now that right there is pretty slick. J&M 1222 grain cart on tracks. I'd love to have one of those. Wouldn't be dragging an anchor through a muddy field anymore. In typical John Deere fashion, they only want you to use their products and not what we had on the last combine. So, as opposed to just being able to plug in our four pin camera, they've moved to a five pin system which involved purchasing this extra jumper. Yeah, like a five, 10 minute at best install, if you know what you're doing. Me, not totally 30 minutes. I would never take that long to do a project this simple. Uh, don't let my sweat and anger on my face fool you. I was quick. This wasn't frustrating. It was easy. No problem. So I've done some R&D. I think I can get it on the inside of that bolt right there. My fear though is that as this thing accordions down, that's going to get crushed. So I'm going to start the combine and get out and kind of see what goes on up there and then make my decision from that. Huh. I guess these are much faster if the battery was never turned off. Maybe that's what the holdup was. Oh, that's a perfect spot. You see that bolt right there? That's where I'm wanting to mount that at. You can see it doesn't come all the way down. And out. I figured I'm gonna be working from the cab roof. Might as well attach our nice Midland Radio six decibel antenna. A great combination with the Midland Radios because it extends your range and reception, makes your audio clear. And of course, the better your communication is, the better your life is. I may only say that because I'm the grain cart driver for two combines in corn. My dad could probably care less. I wasn't much holding that on. Zip tie on for good measure. That right there is our finished product. I'm hoping that this camera will be able to really show you when the grain is hitting it, that you're getting towards that front lip of the grain tank. The grain tank full thing is at its max setting, which is only tuned to the original grain tank spec. And we've added like 70 or 75 bushels of extra capacity with this extension. So that goes off about 10% too soon. Now I definitely warned you, hey, you're getting close to full, but you can push a little bit farther. So I'm hoping with this camera, we can visually see, hey, it's about to run over the front of the cab here. You better stop. Or at the very least, if you're not planning on stopping, you can at least radio the grain cart operator and teach him some new words, which is where this Midland radio comes in. We're just gonna do the antenna for now. We'll install the actual radio on another day. And maybe we might just enjoy ourselves a little bit of air conditioning. Applications, video, analog two, that's behind the combine, analog four. Oh, there's our green tank. Mirror it the other way so it sits right. 
Okay, I think it was right the first time. That is gonna be handy. One thing that is really neat about these displays is I believe you can go in and edit the camera, assign a camera to a specific trigger. So here we have grain tank full. We're gonna assign analog four, timeout auto. I don't know what that is, but basically as long as the grain tank's full, this camera should pull up somewhere. So we got our reverses set. So if I pull the hydrostat back, it's park brake engaged, but still. Okay, excellent, excellent, excellent. There's so many screens. Pull the hydrostat back, boom, there's our camera. You can control almost everything from that first page I showed you in that one bracket. Although this has everything, harvest settings, header settings, spread on the back from that Powercast tailboard. Shows you your settings for your presets on your hydrostat for going up and down. These are combine advisor things. Once we get those cameras installed, which probably won't be this season, there'll be a third option here, which is for the full automation with the changes in harvest setting based on the camera readouts. I've been kicking the can down the road because I actually have a main thing to accomplish in here. And I need to fold this down and make sure it's not gonna crush my camera. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Wish us luck. We're either gonna be very happy or have a broken camera. Oh, flawless execution. You see it right there? Nothing touching it. I don't want to jinx myself, but normally projects that I'm involved in that involve mechanical things usually don't work out that well. Although we haven't even harvested a single kernel of corn or bean. So there's a lot that can go wrong between now and then. One of these days we're going to need to back this out and take it to the fuel tank because based on the fuel gauge, She's about running on empty. Quite literally on empty. Okay, we've really wined and dined the 780 over here, so we'll focus our attention on our 670. And there you have it, folks. It's been two hours on the 780 and 20 seconds on the 670. That seems fair. Both to accomplish the same goal. What's crazy is that actually looks like it came that way. Looks like that's gonna be almost as effective as a couple hundred dollar camera investment. We've got a $5, maybe $4 two inch convex mirror. Katie in the 670 here should be able to look over and actually see the top of her grain tank and have a good idea of when possibly she should stop. I wish I could give you hard numbers on who's more likely to spill corn off their combine. I'd like to tell you it's dad, but I spent a good amount of time last harvest helping Katie pick up corn. So I think they're both equally reliable in the bird feed department. Good old mother deer would probably charge you $500 for that mirror option. I'd cut you a break. Friends and family discount, we'll do it for 250. It shouldn't be too much longer before that inch and a half rain we got here over the last weekend dries up and the ground rig is able to go back out into these last few soybean fields we have and apply fungicide because they have reached that third reproductive growth stage. Once that's done, or maybe at the same time, we'll also start to focus on corn fungicide this season. I'm not gonna open that can of worms today. I'll save that for the next video, but we're gonna have quite the show to put on here over the next seven days or so. Anyways, I think that's more than enough farming for one video. I do greatly appreciate all of you tuning in. Do me a favor and like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more and comment down below if you have any questions. You know I love to talk about farming. Have a great day, everyone. Peace.